Check, check. Happy Thanksgiving a few days early. Um, it is good to gather together now as a church family to celebrate Thanksgiving, right? We're not going to eat turkey and stuffing this morning, um, but we are going to recount God's blessings and share them with each other and celebrate that together. So I invite you to do that by saying the words of Psalm 100 together. Will you stand, please? And we will say these words together, a psalm of praise. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It's he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. And as courts with praise, give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. At the end of the service, we're going to sing a few um, Thanksgiving hymns and you'll have an opportunity to share what you're thankful for. At the start of the service, we are going to give thanks for Jesus. Uh, here are a few words from the Canons of Dort. God doesn't owe this grace to anyone. For what could God owe to one who has nothing to give that can be paid back? Indeed, what could God owe to one who has nothing of one's own to give but sin and falsehood? Therefore, the person who receives this grace owes and gives eternal thanks to God alone. We thank God for his son, for our salvation in him alone. So will you join? We're going to sing the song, I Believe.
take a moment and you may greet those around you. Catch as many people as you can in a few minutes. We continue to praise to celebrate new life in Christ.
to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to Would you pray with me, Lord? You have been so wonderful. You have been so kind and so patient and so steadfast and so graceful and beautiful. And yet, Lord, we confess that sometimes, um, at best, we take a few minutes on Sunday morning to thank you. But, Lord, we ask you to give us a thankful heart. We ask you to give us a grateful, not just attitude, but also a grateful life. Lord, we pray that we would live in gratitude for who you are and what you've done. Lord, this morning and this week, as we think about Thanksgiving... We pray that you would transform us into people of gratitude who will tell the world about the one to whom we're grateful. In Jesus' name, amen. You can um, have a seat and... um, We're actually going to pray a little bit more over the course of this service, but here's what we're doing this morning. We are going to, um, after I make a couple announcements, we're going to look at Psalm 107, and in theory, I'm not going to talk about that for too long, but um, then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of live out that psalm together. And there are some microphones here, and we're going to have a roving microphone as well. We want to give you a chance to do what this psalm calls you to, which is to give thanks together. A couple announcements before we do that. Um, The deacons have asked me to announce that the communion love offering for December 1st, that's next Sunday, we're going to have communion, we're going to celebrate that together, has been designated for the Voice of the Martyrs. The Voice of the Martyrs serve persecuted believers in the most difficult and dangerous locations to follow Christ. It's really an amazing ministry. If you want to know more about that, um, you can go to www.persecution.com, um, which will probably shake up your heart and your mind a little bit because there are some places in the world where it's very hard to follow Jesus. Also next Sunday, we are going to be beginning our Advent season, our series, as we talk about what we are, um, how we prepare for the coming of Christ. And we're, the theme is going to be how to, colon, Christmas. Because there's a lot of things that Christmas calls us to that, aren't necessarily easy or clear. So we're going to talk about how to Christmas from Scripture. Also, um, if you have a mailbox here at church, we have in your mailbox a financial report that the deacons put out so you can kind of know where we are as a church financially. So... Just keep those things in mind. I want to read to you from Psalm 107, and we're just going to start out by reading 
the first three verses, but then I want to encourage you, if you're a Bible flipper in, you know, a paper book, or if you've got it on your phone, we're going to have hopefully some verses up here, although I think I'm going to give Graham a challenge this morning to keep up with the verses that um, we're looking at in Psalm 107. Psalm 107, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story, those he redeemed from the hand of the foe, those he gathered from the lands, from east and west, from north and south. Lord, help us to give thanks to you this morning because you're worthy. Lord, write these scriptures, these truths, not just on our minds, but on our hearts and on our lives for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So, this week is Thanksgiving. And, you know, whatever we do in our lives, we want to do it right, right? I mean, we don't want to do it wrong, and that's why we're talking about how to Christmas. But this morning, maybe you think of this message as how to Thanksgiving. Because you can do it wrong, right? In fact, I've always been struck by the fact that there are people in our society that would say, we should be grateful, but I don't believe in God, they say. I'm like, so who are you grateful to? You ever wonder that? And Scripture says over and over and over again that we're supposed to be grateful to God. In fact, if you look back at the history of Thanksgiving, that was really clear. In 1777, the Continental Congress, in November of that year, had a national proclamation of Thanksgiving. They said, we are thankful to Almighty God for what he has done. In 1789... George Washington said, it's interesting, he kind of blamed it on Congress. He said, Congress has told me that I should do this. (laughs) Um, But he recommended to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. So, 1777 The Continental Congress says, be thankful. 1789, George Washington says, be thankful. Several individual presidents proclaimed that same thing over the next few years. Interestingly, Thomas Jefferson said, you can be thankful if you want. That's between you and your God. So... I don't know what to do with that. But then in in 1863, Abraham Lincoln. Now, if you're a history buff, notice this. 1863, was the war over? No. 1865, the war ended. But Abraham Lincoln, while the war was still going on, proclaimed that we as a nation should be trusting the sovereign hand of God even when everything wasn't okay. I think that's important. And as we look at the psalm this morning, we'll see this. 
But the point of this is not, oh, look what a great nation we are. The point of this is that every one of those things was a statement that said, there must be someone to be grateful to. If you're taking notes on the sheet here, um, it says that gratitude must, thanksgiving must have an object. You must be thankful to someone or something to say, I'm just kind of grateful to the universe in a lot of ways doesn't make sense, does it? Yeah. So what does the Bible say? I mean, ultimately, I mean, I'm a George Washington fan, but, you know, he didn't speak for God. Psalm 107 says this. It says, give thanks. Stop there. Give thanks. It's interesting, as I studied this this week, I learned, like a lot of us growing up, that really what we need is an attitude of gratitude, right? You ever heard that before? That's not what this says. When it says, give thanks, give is a public expression. Give thanks means a public expression. It means we express to those around us out loud that we are grateful. And so if I just walk around with a grateful heart without ever saying thank you, I'm not really doing what this scripture says. In fact, one of the things that especially men say to justify our, the fact that we are often really bad at giving gifts is we say, it's the thought that counts. Is that really true? Gentlemen, if you're married, if you were to say, hey, honey, it's our anniversary, but I didn't get you anything or I didn't do anything, but I I thought about you. How's that going to go? I mean, after all, it's the thought, maybe not. So give thanks means a public outward expression of gratitude. Why are we supposed to do that? Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Now, that's interesting. He doesn't say that he does good things. It says that is the nature of who God is. He's good. In fact, it's a fascinating word in the Hebrew. Um, The word is tov. Everybody say tov. It, It doesn't just mean good things. It means deep moral goodness. God doesn't just choose to do good. God is by the nature of who he is, he's good. In fact, you can translate this by saying God isn't just good. God is goodness itself. That's why Job can say, though he slay me, I will yet hope in him. Because God is good. We're supposed to give thanks because God is good. There's another reason. And his love endures forever. Now we've talked about this word. I, I, I'm making two Hebrew references this week to impress you by my vast knowledge of Hebrew, which includes about two words. (laughs) But tov is God is good, and this word for love is hesed, and we've talked about that before. Everybody say hesed. Okay, that means more than love. It means kindness. It means there's really no equivalent word in English. It means mercy and kindness and love and loyalty and faithfulness and grace and compassion. It is a statement of the fact that God's outpouring of grace and love and everything that we need on a spiritual level is 
constant and deep. And in fact, it doesn't just mean hesed as in God is good to us. It, it me, it's a covenantal word, I guess, is what I would say. It means we belong to each other. It means that we swim in God's hesed. We exist in, in it. We live and move and have our being. That is the life that we live in, even if we don't recognize it. You might have heard people talk about before the idea that, you know, are fish aware of the water? We don't know. I've never asked a fish, but sometimes when you are surrounded by something, you don't even recognize that it's there. So it's saying, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Now we could stop right there. We should give thanks just because God is good and just because he chooses to love. But the scripture doesn't start right there. It doesn't stop right there. Look at verse 2. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Now, you might have grown up with the idea that let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right? Right? That's been written in a couple songs. That's a familiar wording. But even think about that. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What is that so? Let the redeemed of the Lord say that they are the redeemed of the Lord, right? It's talking about the fact that those of us who have been rescued by God should express that. The thanksgiving that the Bible calls us to is almost always verbal. It's to be sung. It's to be spoken. It's to be proclaimed. It's supposed to be out loud. Psalm 95 says, let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. You can't do that silently, can you? Extol him with music and song silently. That didn't work. We already read together Psalm 100, which says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. It's a verbal thing. Now wait, so we're supposed to do that. Who is supposed to do that? The redeemed. Those of us who have been purchased by God. And that's a significant meaning when this was written in a way that maybe we don't understand. There was an understanding of redemption that we knew that people would live their lives in such a way that sometimes they would end up in debt so deep or they would that they would end up in prison or they would end up literally as slaves because they couldn't pay off their own debt and when it says redeemed it means God has paid your debt. God has has taken us when we have on a certain level lost everything. He has paid our debt. He has bought us out of slavery. That's what God did in Jesus Christ. And the rest of Psalm 107 kind of gives us instructions on how to do that. How to give thanks. And it lists um, four things that, four ways in which God has redeemed us. 
First of all, uh, we see that God retrieves us when we wander. Then secondly, we see that God releases us when we're captives. Then we see that God restores us when we're sick. And finally, God rescues us in the storm. See, for our words, are, are we impressed by that? And that? I was pretty proud of that. <clears throat> so what does it do? And I want you to be thinking about this because we want to give you a chance in about five minutes to thank God for how God has worked in your life. First of all, it says that God retrieves us when we wander. That those times, and you see this in verses 4 through 9, it talks about some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. And then God, then look at verse 6. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. That phrase happens four times. In all of these situations in Psalm 107, the psalmist says, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. So that's part of the key, is crying out to the Lord in our trouble. And I, I thought about, I don't know if I've told this story before, but... On our honeymoon, Julie and I got married in October of 1989. We rode our dinosaur out to Colorado, and we rented a cabin, and October in Colorado is kind of right on the break into winter. And we went for a hike in the mountains, and, you know, we could look off in the mountains and you can see a storm coming. We knew that there maybe might be snow, but I, I thought, because I'm an expert growing up in Iowa, I'm an expert on mountains, I said, oh, we'll be fine. We just, you know, we'll be, it's a long way away. And we were probably about a mile away from our car, and it started to snow. And one of the crazy things about snow in the mountains is that it can become quickly hard to see the path. And we quickly, within a few minutes, began to realize we were not sure where the path was. And even though we were probably less than a mile from our car, we began to worry that we might not find our way back to where we needed to find our way back to. And there was that moment when we said, oh, there's the car. We went from lost to found, and that's what God says in this psalm. God says, I retrieved you when you were lost. I retrieved you when you wandered. And I want, we're going to give you a chance in a minute to ask ourselves, how has God retrieved us in our wandering. Then it says he released us when we were captives. And there's pictures of chains and darkness and rebellion. And being far from God. And being unable to break free of that. Now sometimes that is not easy is it? Sometimes it's not even pleasant. When I was growing up. And you... I had a cold, especially in church, because they didn't want me coughing when my dad was preaching. If I had a cough, there were, you remember Luden's cough drops? The cherry candy that really wasn't 
medicine, but it, it tasted good. They, they still have that. But on the other hand, there were these gray, chalky throat discs, lozenges that were awful. But they worked. What did I want? Ludens. What did I need? The gray, chalky, I don't know what that's called, but it's evil. Anyway, God rescues us when we are captives. He frees us. He releases us. And again, it says, they called, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And in both of these, it says this, look at verse 8. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. In our gratitude, we're supposed to cry out to the Lord and then we're supposed to give thanks. For what he has done. Two more things. It says he restores us when we're sick. And it paints in verses 17 through 22. I encourage you. Go back and read this. It says they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And then it says. Give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love. And his wonderful deeds for mankind. So in the middle of sickness, God rescues us. And finally, in verses 23 through 32, it talks about him rescuing us in the storm. Now, we don't necessarily relate to literal storms now in our lives. Even if you've been on a cruise the chances are you were on a cruise ship so big that even a major storm barely made it rock a little bit. But in those days, they would be on the Mediterranean and there would be storms And they understood that if they cried to the Lord in their trouble, not just physical, literal storms, but in the midst of life, if we cry out to the Lord in our trouble, he will hear us. And then it says, let us give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. So I want to ask you, as you think back on your life, or even just on this year, how has God retrieved you when you wander? Or retrieved somebody else, somebody you love when they wandered? How has God freed you released you when you were captive maybe it was just stress and fear and well I shouldn't say just stress and fear that can be awful maybe you experienced that sense of casting your anxiety on the Lord because he cared for you and you felt freedom you ever had that sense when A burden was weighing you down, and God set you free. Is there a time when you've been sick, and God has been with you in that and has rescued you from it? And finally, has there been a storm that God brought you through? So what I want us to do, And this is kind of a Thanksgiving tradition going back several years to our Thanksgiving services. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to share some things you're thankful for. And we will start out with um, kind of focusing on 
the idea of God rescuing you or retrieving you when you wander. Now, don't worry too much about these categories. You know, don't say, oh, I want to share this, but I don't know which R word it fits under. Don't worry about that. I don't think God is going to be angry and offended if you share something as a retrieving when you wander, which might be a rescue. Yeah, don't worry about that. So we're going to um, sing some songs, and I want to invite the worship team up, or is it just going to be you, Maria? Is it going to be? I don't know what it's going to be. Um, but if you, if you will share, and I want you to be courageous about this, because for some of you, this is easy. For some of you, it's terrifying. But how many of you have ever felt encouraged and strengthened by somebody else's words of gratitude and thanks and worship to God? Yeah. Take that risk for each other. So if you want to come up to one of these mics, that'll be fine. Mark, are you going to be wandering with a mic? Or Graham's going to be wandering with a mic. So um, Graham, why don't you come down here? Um, let's have a, a thankfulness. And this can be as short or as long as you want. But how has God brought you home. I just wanted to say how thankful I am to God for my personal salvation, for him bringing me out of my darkness, for him bringing me to this church and giving me a safe place to land. And I wanted to say how thankful I am to all the people in this church who have made me feel so welcome. You know, I had to do this. I didn't want to do it. But Pastor, after you got up there, and every, almost everything that came out of your mouth was something I said, Lord, I'm afraid to go home and not tell people how grateful I am to God. I want to let you all know that when you see me walking around here with a smile on my face and praising God, I'm fighting battles. And I'm fighting them in the name of Jesus. You know, last week, about two, I don't want to be too long, 
but I was walking through the house, and I don't know, I, it's been so long since I've heard this song. God gave to me, Lord, make me a living sanctuary. Sanctuary, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I will become a living sanctuary for you. And I didn't know the words, so I called my daughter. And she said, well, Mama, get the hymn book and find it. So I did. But I didn't know what God was preparing me for. But you know, we all love our firstborn. Mm. I'm trying to hold myself together, but give me a little time. And I, about four o'clock or something one morning, I got a call from my daughter-in-law in Maryland telling me that he had been rushed to the hospital that he had. I think he said viral pneumonia. They had just come back off a cruise. And I didn't know which way to turn because my child was just laying almost at the point of death. They couldn't find the virus. They was putting them on all kind of medications and tubes and things. And but you know what? I stopped and I said, the battle is not mine. It's belonged to the Lord. I went to God. I stood on his promises of what he said in his word. I stood there, I rejoiced, and I gave thanks to God in the time of my trouble. And then as I was talking to God, and you know, the enemy is going to always come in and try to snatch what you're thinking. <laughs> and then the Lord, I said, Lord, I've lost two children already. Now, my God, do you going to make me go through this again? Oh, God. And then you brought up, Pastor, and I thought about, and you know what the Lord said to me? He says, well, at least I'm taking yours one by one. <laughs> but said, Job lost all of his in a group at one time. So we are no better than the people in the Bible. We got to go through some stuff. We got to stand on the word of God. It is, it, 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 we don't see what's coming upon us, but we are better put on the whole armor of God and be ready to fight these battles in the name of Jesus based on what Jesus said. But I'm gonna tell you one thing and then I'm gonna sit down because I mean, uh, you don't know me. But listen, <laughs> I prayed, I talk to God, I rejoice, I gave him thanks for healing, even before it came about, and guess what? Mm. Yesterday, my daughter-in-law called me and said, Mom, I said, what? Mm. She said, they are releasing him, he's going home, he's up, walking around, drinking water, and doing good. <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, then I've done a little the Lord brought right back to me. We got to be a living sanctuary for Jesus Christ. Try by trial and test and going through this life and this journey that we are on because we ain't seen nothing yet. I don't care what we've gone through. God is a healer if we stand on what is promising. We might have to go through some pain and suffering. You see me walking around here grinning and laughing and praying. The joy of the Lord is my strength, and that's what I'm depending on. And I, I promise God, I don't care what he put on me. I'm going to praise him anyhow. I'm going to praise God for pain, suffering, sickness, disappointment. I don't care what it is. I said, come on, enemy, because I'm ready. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Hey, glory be to God. Come on now. Hey, take it and talk. This, this was a rescue. <laughs> 
this past year, our family went through some, uh, some real medical problems, some large, some small. But God was faithful to us, and he brought us through it. And I know that there was a lot of petitions from people here in this church for us. There were cards, phone calls, visits, and we appreciated it all. And I know that it was more than just the doctors and nurses that brought us back. Last Saturday, we had a birthday party for a great-grandchild. And I looked around and I saw my entire family, which doesn't happen very often when you can get everybody together. And uh, it almost brought me to tears just to see how blessed I am. And so, yes, I'm thankful. I'm thankful for everything he's given us. I won't do the whole exp explaining thing, but in every one of these R words in this psalm, it's pretty clear that we don't just, God doesn't just rescue us from these things. He's with us in these things. And that is beautiful, isn't it? God doesn't say, I'll make that go away. He says, I will be with you. So that's beautiful. Let's sing the next song. Yeah, we have a verse that we can say together first. This is one of the verses that's repeated in Psalm 107. So will you say this verse together and then we'll sing another song and you'll have another opportunity to share. We give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. else do we have? I mean, God has been so faithful. Um, I, I just want to thank the congregation for all of your prayers and cards. Uh, for Beth these last eight years. And uh, we continue to ask and need your prayer support. Uh, Beth is still doctoring and doing a little bit better uh, today especially, but some days are good, some are not as good. But we know the Lord is faithful, and we know the Lord hears all your prayers. And uh, from the bottom of our hearts, want to thank you. And the support of Christian friends, brothers, and sisters uh, Pastor Mark and uh, everyone involved, 
we certainly thank you. Never forget the importance of prayer. The Lord listens and knows our hearts. He knows our needs. He knows us better than we know ourselves, and he loves us more than we can ever imagine. So thank you. Thank you so much, and we appreciate your continued prayers for Beth as we continue to seek health and strength for her. I think we should thank God for Graham's ability to run around. And, uh... Nice to see somebody can run yet. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot to be thankful for. This has been a year that's been really actually pretty good for me health-wise, and I thank the Lord over my years. I've been relatively healthy all the time, so I have much to be thankful for. But uh, the last few weeks and few months, it's been a little different twist. And a little surgery I thought I would need for my neck was going to be routine. Turned out to be not so routine. Anyway, my voice is a little thick, so I don't have much you know, time to speak. It's going to frog up on me, I'm sure. But I thank the Lord for taking me through this particular time. I thank you for the, you as a church for your support and for your loving kindness and, and thinking about me. Uh, I think for my family also. And all the support that we've got, I thank you for this church especially. It's been in this church. I've been in this church all my life. You, a lot of you know how long that's been already, so I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to say it again. <laughs> but God has been good, and he's been good to us as a church. I've met, seen lots and lots of your folks and some of your grandparents, even my, during my time. So, And it's, it's been a great uh, saint, a, a, a group of saints over the years that I have, when I look back, how thankful I am that we as a church, even though we're small now and we were bigger in years past, we're still faithful and we still have a chore and, and a task to do to serve him in this community and for all of those around us. And so I give thanks to everybody. Thank you. Wayne is almost 60, I believe, right? Is that right? this one before uh, probably prior years but um, I've I have good health but I've had a number of situations that could have been scary where I was saved at the you can't hear me okay I was saved at the last minute or I was saved from further harm this was either doing something adventurous or just driving and uh, realized that that could have been a lot worse um, and so whether because of my own hubris or ignorance or something, I uh, made a mistake that could have been much worse. And so I thank God that he humbles me often enough that I can recognize him almost immediately in those situations, even when it seems like circumstances. It's just the way things work. They could have gone this way, it could have gone that way, but no, I think I, I recognize that God is involved even in those little things um, that could have been much worse and saved me from worse trouble. And I thank him. I thank him that he, he hasn't had to drag me through fires so much to still recognize when he's at work in those little things. Thank you, Graham. Uh, just a. Uh, I want to thank the Lord for the, the privilege of participating in that 175 years celebration here. Uh, that, was, that was a very special event, and uh, when you think about how long 175 years is, <laughs> it's a long time. So this, uh, the Lord has definitely uh, watched over this church for, uh, and blessed her for all that time. We're also, Lynn and I are very happy that we're here at Thorn Creek and we, we've made a lot of friends and uh, Lynn gets a chance to play the organ uh, again and uh, that's just a wonderful blessing for her and hopefully a blessing for everybody here. Uh, I know that she, 
And, you know, and not to discount uh, Maria and the job that she does with the music program here. Uh, it's just a wonderful tribute to the Lord, and um, it's just a great team of people working here at Thorn Creek. And uh, you can see how everybody watches out for each other, and uh, it's just real important to me. And I think about Dan. He, you know, been involved with the cadets for so long. How many years now? I had 20? Eight, 18 years. Talk about devotion to duty, and, and his wife, uh, and, yeah, and so everybody just pitches in and works together here at Thorn Creek, and that's just a real, real blessing, you know. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to come to church on Sunday, and, and we look forward to it very much. So uh, uh, we give the Lord all the praise, and we thank him from the bottom of our hearts. Amen. Let's follow that with our verse again, and then after a song, we'll have, I think, one more opportunity to share. We give thanks, thanks to the, the Lord, Lord for, for his, his unfailing, unfailing love, love and his, and his wonderful, wonderful deeds, deeds for, for mankind. mankind. That from the beginning of time, even starting in Genesis, that mankind and, of course, ourselves, we all mess up and we sin against God, and yet he is faithful 
and we can trust his promises and all the way present time and through revelation that we can have hope because we can trust that his promises are true and we can trust that he has a plan. So thankfulness is one of those things that I just can't not do. Does that make sense? I am so thankful to God. It's one of those things where I want to just brag on God, how great he has been in my life. Um, I'm going to cry. I didn't want to cry. It's all good stuff. So 35 years of marriage to a wonderful man who's had a huge impact on my spiritual life, giving me adventures, challenging me. Um, two beautiful children who are walking with the Lord. That's amazing. Um, an answer to prayer for a husband, for our daughter, who loves the Lord. Um, opportunities to see God's amazing creation this year. We're, as we sing those songs, I think about the places we've visited this year in Utah and California. God providing those opportunities to see his amazing creation. The birds that come to my bird feeder who are just amazingly beautiful. And it's amazing to me that they're each a different species. And my job, that I have the money to do the things that, and my husband's job, but I love my students. This week we did, a, we did a thankfulness board. I created a whiteboard in my classroom, and it just, a we are thankful. And I said, kids, go ahead and put some things up, high schoolers. Put some things up on this board that you are thankful for. And before the end of the first day, Jesus was on the board at a public school. And I just, I just love that, that the kids um, are willing to put those things up there, you know, their families and their, their friends, food, things like mashed potatoes get on the board also. But um, just so many things to be thankful for that God has done in my life. Um, I should always start with my parents because they came first and were instrumental in me knowing who Jesus is. And so I'm thankful for them and um, for what Jesus has done in rescuing me from my sin and my, my struggles with, you know, self-esteem and selfishness. <laughs> so um, those are my battles, but I am so thankful, and I'm super thankful for this church. Like Mark was saying, the 175th anniversary was such a beautiful celebration of God's faithfulness, not just to this church, but to people. And what he's done in people's lives. And um, having this team. I'm thankful for Maria and her leadership. And her partnership in the ministry here with Mark. And for Rick. All you do to serve our church. Keeping us clean and organized. And setting up and taking down. And there's just everybody who. The elders who help. And um, deacons who lead our church. Um, all of you serve in so many ways, and I'm just so grateful to be partners with you guys in the faith here at Thorn Creek. I would um, say that I'm thankful for her, but that's kind of a given, isn't it? <laughs> I'm thankful that this church was around when Doug and I first were married and I came back to the Lord through the ministry of the women here. I'm very grateful that I can still come and enjoy the fellowship that's here and I praise God that he's active in our lives. came from Arizona to say that, and that's beautiful. I'm thankful that I get an exercise. <laughs> um, I also am a member of this church and Church of Roseland all my lifetime, and no matter what I've gone through, this church has been such a support to me. And all the highs and all the lows, there's always somebody that comes or prays or 
sends cards, and uh, this is just such a fa uh, faithful congregation, and that's why I still come, <laughs> because this is my church home. And um, I'm also grateful for the prayers that you said for my son-in-law, Ed. Um, he appreciates it as well. He knows you're praying for him, and uh, slowly and surely things are improving not out of the woods yet, but uh, still going the right direction. So I am just so grateful for this church. We're going to close with a song, but I want to remind you that as we sing it, um, this coming year, between now and next Thanksgiving, we're going to have other challenges in our lives as a church, um, in each of our individual journeys. But I want to remind you that the God who was faithful thousands of years ago is the same God that has been faithful for 175 years and is the same God who will be faithful this year. There will be ups and downs, but as we look back and as we say thank you, well, the closing verse, and then we'll sing this song. Verse 43 of Psalm 107 says this. Let the one who is wise heed these things and ponder the loving deeds of the Lord. Let's stand and sing the goodness of God.
for our benediction. I want to speak over you the first and last verses of this psalm again. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Let you who are redeemed of the Lord tell your story. Let the one who is wise heed these things, and let us ponder the loving deeds of our God. Go in peace. Amen.